Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Slam of Wrestling. Myself, Supreet, and this is your NXT review for May 11th, 2021. Joined by Spandani. What's up, Spandani? I am fine, Supreet. How are you doing? I am doing good, man. What do you think about NXT? And it looks like, you know, they are, you know, uh, you can say for the last two, three weeks, you know, giving us championship matches over championship matches over championship matches. Trying to, you know, make these shows somewhat important. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think they're pushing hard. They are giving the major matches on the weekly shows, which is good, actually. Uh, if you have less pay-per-views, less big shows, uh, if you talk about NXT and normal weekly shows, it gives the titles more importance. The Cruiserweight title is main eventing the episode. So that means it's every title is getting the importance. And now they've announced uh, two, one title match next week. They've announced the major NXT title match two weeks. So it's good. And In Your House has also been announced. So it's good. I liked NXT. By the way, when is In Your House? Is it next month? Yeah, it's on June 13th. Mm, on that case... Uh, the announcement is not that exciting. If you get fans back, then we will be talking. But in your house kind of fills the fact that it's in the Capital Wrestling Center. It's small. It's in your house. It's the good uh, feeling. They are repeating shows. That's uh, uh, more important. They had in your house last year. They had Io Shirai, Charlotte and Ripley facing in the main event and all that stuff. So it's okay. I, I find it exciting. Uh, but they are going to build up, uh, build it up nicely because they have an entire month, so they will do it nicely. So I'm excited that they are going to build it up properly because they have an entire month. They have good superstars. The stories are being built. So Bobby Fish returned today. We'll talk about that in a while. So all of that is now hyping up the pay per view. So I am, I am excited for the show. Let's see. Let's see. I think. Uh, I don't know how they're going to build, uh, you know, these matches, these storylines in a month. You know, they are slowly taking place, but uh, still they are falling behind. You know, you got a paper you in a month. So let's see how they do it. So on this week's uh, NXT, uh, we had two title matches. We had uh, the NXT Women's Championship match. Uh, we had uh, Raquel Gonzalez defending the title against Mercedes Martinez. Uh, we had the Cruiserweight Championship match. Uh, Kushida defending his title against the former champion Santos Escobar in a two out of three falls match. And so much more. But before that, if you are new to this channel, then make sure to like, share, subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. Check out our other content. Everything you will need uh, will be in the description below. So let's quickly begin with NXT, man. Let's start from the top. Uh, we began with Austin Theory facing the NXT champion. Karen Cross, uh, can you give us some backstory on how this match took place? Yeah, so last week it was Karen Cross who came in and said, I'm not afraid of anyone, I'm not scared of anyone. And five people attacked him and he st uh, still somehow stood uh, tall above them. So Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory, obviously they have a rivalry against William Regal. So uh, they went on and all shouted and everything. So they announced Austin Theory versus Karrion Cross with Gargano on the outside. And it was a pretty good match, to be honest. Karrion Cross getting so much, uh, you know, defensive. And Austin Theory, I didn't expect him to attack at all. But they gave him some time. They uh, allowed him to attack Karrion Cross. But then it feels like Cross is invincible. And he comes back and smashes Theory to win. Like, yeah, like they did give you know some offense to Austin Theory, but you know, uh, Cross is made to look like a monster at the end. Uh, I think he got two side to suplex and his uh, submission hold, yeah. and that was pretty much it. And about uh, we will talk both here, but uh, shall we talk about the NXT Championship or the North American Championship? Because uh, there are two scenarios that we learned uh, this week. Like, uh, yeah, let's talk about the NXT Championship actually. Yo, so, uh, we had Finn Balor coming out after the match, you know, after Karen Cross beat Austin Theory. So, it was, you know, a kind of a throwback, you know. Uh, like, this is the similar way Karen Cross challenged Finn Balor uh, all that weeks ago. So, Finn Balor returned the favor here. So, I think we are getting the rematch, uh, I think, in two weeks. So, Finn Balor yeah, says... So, Finn Balor claims that he doesn't want to be in the line and he wants this immediate rematch. So... I think it's uh, you know 
uh, nothing much of a prediction here finn balor is not winning yeah but you know i was disappointed with the way they gave in the match obviously we want to see a cross versus balor rematch and probably cross is obviously retaining but we want to see that match but the way they gave uh, balor the rematch i had a problem with that last week you have three of your top single superstars of nxt you have pete dunn kyle o'reilly and finn balor all of them attack uh, karian cross gargano and theory come up you should have a multi man match and then decide the number one contender so what was the point of bringing pete dunn and kyle o'reilly last week they just got so, beat up and now they're in different storylines i think you know uh, i will say you hold that thought for now we'll get to you know pete dunn and kyle o'reilly so i think they are getting into some situation pretty much uh, okay. implication you know will be related to take over in your house so hold that thought yeah. up um, but you know on one side we have cleared with the nxt championship there are also a situation with the north american championship so uh, gargano versus bronson reed that's happening next week right yeah gargano versus bronson reed in a steel cage match next week so uh, what what do you think about you know them doing this a steel cage match you know they all gave a slight you know reason on why you know like bronson red is fed up of the way gargano theory but do you think we really needed a steel cage match i think we did because <clears throat> doing a steel cage match increases the stakes of the match draws more viewers as a, it's a stipulation match a normal stipulation match obviously attracts people so my first thought was i was actually shocked where are you going to fit the steel cage in such a small place because when it was the pc we could not get steel cage matches just because it was a small place but now they've announced that it's a steel cage match probably they have space to fit it in and bronson reed is tired of austin theory disturbing and attacking and distracting and all of that stuff so now it's one on one inside the cage plus it's open from the top austin theory can still come inside so let's see what happens but i think bronson reed could be winning this match it's not so predictable that gargano will win but you know doing the steel cage stipulation there is a you know way uh, no pun intended that uh, gargano could be <laughs> you know winning uh, next week yeah gargano could be winning by escaping but again they have built bronson reed a, a particular way Pro- again no pun intended so probably bronson reed could be winning next week we do not know but i don't think it's very predictable to say that gargano is winning bronson reed can very well win i hope you know uh, bronson reed wins you know he has lost twice now so third time should be the charm he almost came close in the ladder match the five man ladder match that was happening he almost came close So let's see where that goes. Uh, I think next we had MSK versus Brizango, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So this was, you know, very pretty uh, entertaining TV match. I think we had uh, the referee doing leap frogs at one point. Yeah. Which was I, hilarious. I don't know if he was advised to do so or he himself went into doing that, but it was nice. so pretty back and forth from the uh, both teams here so msk would end up winning uh, with their finisher so post match you know they i think challenged legado del fantasma so i think it was last week or the week before that that uh, legado del fantasma uh, said that they wanted the nxt tag team title uh, title shot so this is one of the potential matches that could be happening in two weeks or so is this happening next week yeah it could be No, no, it's not announced for next week, but it could be happening because uh, Killian Dane and Drake Maverick they are out of the picture. The champs beat them today. They beat Brizango, so slowly they are taking the tag teams out of the picture. The two other teams are there: Champa, Thatcher, and Jyv. So they are also there, but this title match is probably be uh, being built up for two weeks or maybe next week. So let's see where that goes. Uh... Uh, what else did we had on NXT? I think I messed up my notes. We had Leon Ruff screaming on William Regal for a match. Like uh, at first thought, I, I thought I, you know, it came in my mind that why is this guy getting so much TV time? But uh, yeah, he true because I'm not able to take him seriously. But yeah, uh, I think you know they are going for this, you know. 
uh, underdog baby face type character with Leon Ruff. Yeah. Which is you know only limited so, for NXT. I I don't see this guy getting over on the main roster. Absolutely, on the main roster they have better characters. They have better people. So I don't see him becoming a big star right now. But I don't know why he was screaming for a match and stuff. You lost last week. Why do you want a match? What's the point you want to prove? I'd rather go after the person who beat you. That would make sense. But just screaming at the general manager, uh, destroying his desk doesn't make sense at all. So I think he, you know, uh, interrupted Pete Dunn. So Pete Dunn was in the middle of a promo. Uh, he's mad that Finn Balor is getting the first title shot. So Pete Dunn issued a you know a open challenge. So from the back comes Leon Ruff. So we get a small impromptu match here. Pete Dunn would end up you know beating uh, Leon Ruff with a submission or a and think it was yeah. a referee stoppage or something like that. So uh, post match, you know, there was a beat down on. Uh, if, if, was this uh, on this segment or was it in the Kyle O'Reilly uh, only Lorcan? Sorry, it was the Kyle O'Reilly segment. Yeah. So uh, shall we get to that or we uh, get to the normal segments here? We get to the normal segments. We had Legado del Fantasma backstage. Uh, I think it was a uh, you know small promo just uh, Santa Susco Santa Susco yeah, just hyping up the main event. Uh, nothing much here. Uh, we'll get to that main event. Uh, what else did we had? Uh, let's get to the women's championship match. Raquel Gonzalez versus Mercedes Martinez for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, match was you know okay, okay for my liking. Uh, yeah, did it... I did, uh, for me too. It was decent. It wasn't really good or bad. But it was hard hitting for sure, but not uh, something incredible as such. So we had, you know, Mercedes. Uh, she was, you know, hitting. Uh, she hit her finisher in the end, you know. But they, that didn't uh, get the job done. So we had Raquel uh, hitting her fi- finisher of her own, the power bomb, and that got her the win. Uh, so let's uh, think. You know, we predicted last week, and we are talking about it that. Uh, things are, you know, going towards that potential uh, Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai feud. Uh, when and how they do it uh, will be, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, they are uh, doing that, but I didn't see any signs of it today because Dakota was playing nice and with Raquel and all of that, no eye movements or something like that, nothing heelish or anything. But they have also announced the world premiere, the so-called debut of Frankie Monet in two weeks when the NXT title match also takes place. So it's getting interesting. It will get interesting in the future. Let's see where this heads. Uh, you talked about Frankie Monet and you know they're hyping up as their big blockbuster debut. So uh, there was another you know uh, women's uh, I think video package. So this was regarding uh, Tony Storm and Zoe Starks, right? Yeah, they have a match next week. So I think Tony Storm has to get that W next week. Yeah, but the promo package mainly focused on Zoe Stark actually. They built her as a face character. Obviously, she knows how to fight and all that stuff. She only knows to fight. She has to win and everything. So you shouldn't be surprised if Tony Storm loses again because maybe in the future she wins the NXT Women's Championship. But in this feud, probably giving Zoe Stark the win would mean more to build her as a probable star in the future. But the, doesn't that make uh, who Tony Storm look bad? I don't think so because uh, most of the teams uh, right now, if you talk about grizzled young veterans, they're losing since a lot of weeks. We talked about this last week. So they're losing, but they still look strong. So Tony Storm is an accomplished name in the NXT business. Even after losing to so many superstars, you can call that uh, putting over Zoe Star. She will win the NXT Women's Championship in the future and I don't think it will hurt her so much. But you know, uh, as a book, booking standpoint, I you know I would rather cheer for Tony Storm than Zoe Starks. Yeah, we talked about this last week. It's difficult to you know make us like a face character instantly, and that too in front of someone like Tony Storm, who we've known since a lot of years now, from NXT UK to NXT. So it's difficult, but I think they're building her well with the promo packages and stuff. And the small rivalry is probably coming to an end next week. 
and uh, uh, you know another another thing about tony storm is that you know she you know re- is reminding of that phase that eo shirai went through like uh, they turned her mm-hmm. you know a heel but you know the fans were not ready to boo her so she i think tony storm is also going through that same phase yeah but in the capital wrestling center you cannot actually determine who is a heel who is a face because they have recorded all the thunderdome screens they have recorded the voices and everything so it's difficult to guess but uh, yoshira was going through a heel phase she was lose she was also losing a bit but tony storm i don't think is going through the same phase she will be back let's see uh, so next we had you know isaiah swerve scott so i think this guy you know was the highlight of this week's nxt so last week we saw you know uh, they brought in his entourage and they officially formed this table now what's the name it's hit row records so i think you know this is a some sort of a faction with you know a bunch of artists a bunch of rappers and i think you know i'm i think i'm going to get used to this one because it's it's feeling a little different with uh, compared to other factions we have seen recently and i think this is going to benefit uh, isaiah scott a lot yeah absolutely with undisputed era ending they needed a couple of factions now in wwe nxt so building these guys at the hit row records is good AJ Francis there is their big guy is their monster and the powerhouse in their faction he rapped too and there was a girl i don't remember her name it was beef uh, beef feet or something like that so i liked her hair a lot so building a faction like that is good and it's going to benefit Scott a lot because after that major win last week even though against leon ruff but it was a false count anywhere match so after that big win now a faction it's going to mean something important in the future for it and uh, i think this went a little unnoticed but did they you know give some new names to uh, the other three guys yeah they did actually the big guy who was the bald guy he is aj francis obviously but the other two they uh, went a bit subtle with it they didn't be very loud with it so the names have to be announced in the future and if, if they do give them you know some new names i think you know it will uh fit into that uh, rap artist uh, personality you know yeah. because mm. most rap artists give, uh, go through some uh, you know hip hop sorry i'm i'm saying hip hop some bling uh, you know some uh, out of this world type of nicknames so uh, this will yeah. fit uh, these guys characters too mm. it will fit them plus um, doing something like this on nxc we've not seen this a lot so a musical faction or something like that is really interesting uh let's see where this goes man i i think i got uh, pretty high hopes for isaiah for scott uh, as of now uh let's get to kyle o'reilly versus oni lorcan so you know this match came about we you know uh, these two had a little you know argument in the be- i think it was in the parking area so i uh, this mm. was a short uh, tv match uh, both men you know are great technical wrestlers so uh, i think kyle o'reilly got the win with this uh, diving me if i'm not wrong yeah he did so uh, pete dunn was there to you know accompany uh, oni lorcan so both these two the both, the both the heels so they attacked uh, kyle o'reilly so uh, here comes uh, the returning bobby fish so he has not been seen uh until the whole undisputed era thing imploded so he comes for the save so both kyle o'reilly and bobby fish stand uh, tall so these two had a little uh, conversation saying that uh, bobby fish said that he's going to leave kyle o'reilly for now something like that and you know mm. I, when i saw this whole situation going around i said you know i would like you know these two uh, these two were you know a solid tag team for the undisputed era but you know i would still you know don't mind if they were attacked him again yeah but i don't think they need to or they have to because now that you've built kyle o'reilly as a single star uh, having those two big matches with finn balor for the nxt championship now beating adam cole in a unsanctioned match it means big things and if you're building him as a single star putting him in a tag team now would make no sense but again bobby fish said that i have my own business to take care of and he also pointed at pete dunn and oni lorcan 
So in my mind, I think uh, they are going to stall the single star in Kyle O'Reilly. And for NXT in your house, the takeover, they're going to do uh, Fish and O'Reilly versus uh, Dunn and Lorcan. Or, you know, uh, remember when I said, hold your thought, uh, when we were talking about uh, the whole NXT championship uh, situation with Balor yeah, and Cross. Yep. So I think uh, when they are done with uh, Balor and Cross, I think uh, Pete Dunn and Kyle O'Reilly will be fighting out for, you know, the next contendership. So I think Kyle O'Reilly will be coming out as the winner there. And I think we got your in your, in your house main event, Cross versus O'Reilly. Yeah, that could be true. But again, I don't see these small guys beating Cross. I want a big guy to stand up to carry him Cross. He's, he feels like an invincible superstar. He goes through so much with Austin Theory and whatever you say, he's human, right? Austin Theory gives him so much, puts him through the post and barricade and those steels, uh, you know, walls in the Capital Wrestling Center and all of that. And he comes back to the ring and crosses standing tall. So you need a guy who's dominant enough, who has a big presence. Kyle O'Reilly doesn't have it. He's not too big. So, Kyle O'Reilly going up against Cross is again a hero against villain story, but Cross retains. But how? who else can you find if not Kyle O'Reilly? It would be difficult to say this, but Bronson Reed. He's a big guy. Come on. Like, you have Kyle O'Reilly, Pete Dunne, put, put them in the NXT North American Championship picture. These would be classics, Dunne versus Gargano, O'Reilly versus Gargano. And put the big guys in the NXT title picture. Bronson Reed, you have Bronson Reed. Put him in a title match with Karrion Cross. It builds legitimacy for the NXT championship as well. I don't know how they're going to put Bronson Reed in there when he is, you know... I think they need to figure yeah, out that, a way... That's what to... I was saying. They cannot do that, but I would have loved to see that because bigger challenges for Karrion Cross right now. You know, they could do Bronson Reed versus uh, Cross, uh, right? Not right now, maybe in the future when he's on the verge of losing the championship. Imagine Gargano fairly wins next week, which is highly unlikely. He wins fairly next week, maybe pins uh, Bronson Reed or escapes the cage, but is fairly winning. Then Bronson Reed has no reason to go back to Johnny Gargano. Then maybe he goes to Cross. You don't know what the future holds, but I would love to see Bronson Reed because he's a big guy uh, going up against Karen Cross. Yeah, now that you say that, that could be a you know, very believable, very solid match. Yeah. But I'm, uh, as of now, uh, I'm sticking with my guns. With uh, I think they are going with Kyle O'Reilly versus Karen Cross. Yeah. They could be going with, but again, Bobby Fish returning tonight makes the situation intriguing. So, are they going for the tag match against Dunn and Lorcan or are they putting them in separate matches? They, it could be Bobby Fish versus Pete Dunn in one and one So, we have to see what happens because after Fish's return tonight, it's interesting. And, you know, uh, we all forgot about Adam Cole. Uh, how, how is this guy going to favor in, in the recent uh, NXT scenario? Adam Cole returning... Honestly, you don't have a spot for him right now. And from last week, I was uh, comparing the shows from last week. It's so different watching NXT because it's such a large roster. You have one show, one week with these superstars. Next week, you don't have those superstars. Jake Atlas missing. LA Knight, who was possibly getting a push, is missing. All these superstars are missing. So, what are you doing? So, you have the spots in Adam Cole returning... I don't know, man, to be honest. Because uh, in the NXT Championship picture, I don't think so. Maybe he returns at In Your House if Kyle O'Reilly faces Cross and then they restart the feud with Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. Let's see. I think Kyle, uh, Adam Cole has one last run uh, in him for the, that uh, NXT Championship or any feud Absolutely. in general in NXT. Absolutely. Adam Cole is an NXT legend would be overhyping him because he's just in, uh, in the middle of his career but he's an NXT original and he has a run left in him. You know, Triple H is doing his best to keep Adam Cole away from Vincent Bruce. Yeah, absolutely. Adam Cole, I don't know what's going to happen if he goes to the main roster. Would his name be Adam or would, his, would it be Cole? I don't know. <laughs> Once he goes to the main roster, goodbye. 
<laughs> career rest in peace uh we had a you know small video package for the way the new tag team champions uh, sorry women's tag team champions uh that were Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell uh and by the way you know uh, you were saying that uh, several superstars don't get featured every week we didn't see Dexter Loomis uh, on this week's NXT yeah Dexter Loomis and uh, Indy Hartwell they have a love story going on but you didn't continue that as well so you can question all these decisions but overall when you look at the show you feel it's a complete show so in that sense i don't find a problem here uh we had cameron grimes again so this week he, he was absolutely so this week he was uh, auctioning i uh, think for a new bungalow or a house or something so yeah he was auctioning for a villa so the bidding rate was i think 2 million so i think he wanted it for 20 million no no something like that the rate he, went, he went till 8 million he went till 8 million and he was saying give it to me nobody can match that price and boom comes 20 million from the back so i think it was the million dollar man who uh, gave the 20 million mark yeah he gave the 20 million and then cameron grimes is all shocked and he's he's angry who the hell is taking these things you can't do this you are putting me into the ground i don't have this much money uh, by the way, did you catch uh, our fellow Indian in that segment? No, I did not. I'm not getting his name, sadly. Uh, he was uh, uh, he competed against AJ Styles at Superstar Spectacle. Okay, Jeet Rama. Yes, he was sitting right in front of Cameron Grimes. And I'm thinking, okay, I didn't wh- notice. Why is this guy interested in a 20 million bungalow? <laughs> He has nothing to do there. Yeah, he just he's just sitting. You just got here, dude. Uh, anyways, man. Uh, speaking about this Cameron Grimes, uh, Ted DiBiase situation, yet another you know uh, you know this uh, light-hearted comedy segments. But I am thinking, where is this all leading to? Yeah, Cameron Grimes' future is uncertain. There, obviously, you can have these fun segments for a long time now because it's entertaining. We're not getting bored right now. You can probably do it for six or eight weeks more. But which title is he going after? Because that's the final point. Is he going after the North American Championship or the NXT Championship? That's the point. So that is where I see him going. Maybe for the uh, North American Championship. Because I don't find him credible enough for the NXT Championship right now. Because it's the World Championship of NXT. So that's the major title. I don't see him going I think his selling point is his uh, new gimmick right now. That's why they are keeping yeah, him he, from he, the title. He's position. going for that funny gimmick, for that money gimmick uh, for the next six to eight weeks. We are not bored yet, but we are wrestling fans. Obviously, we get bored in a second. So they can continue this for a while, but then we, it'd be interesting to see where he goes. But, you know, everything is leading towards, you know, Cameron Grimes going bankrupt. I think yeah. <laughs> he lose all the money one time. So I think we went through the entire of NXT. Shall we get to the main event or I'm missing something? No, you're not missing anything. So let's talk about Kushida versus Santos Escobar for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. This was two out of three false match. Uh, I found this match to be very solid, you know, even for a Santos yeah. Escobar match. Yeah, it was really, really good actually. But again, there has to be a part. We're talking wrestling. There has to be an issue. So in the entire match, the only thing that I didn't like, the one thing I didn't like was that they repeated a quick fall. The first fall, you gave it to Santos Escobar and immediately the second fall happens, which shouldn't. If they around, when I was watching the show, in my Indian time, uh, the main event began around 10.25. You have 35 minutes to cover the entire match. You can give them proper 10-minute matches and give them each fall. But you, these immediate falls, like we see in Survivor Series matches, one goes, another goes, another goes. So continuously, four or five eliminations. That's not how you do it. You should give them time to complete each fall. But if you throw that out of the window, if you throw the second fall, the, uh, the speed of it, overall, it was a really good match. Uh, you know why that happened? I think, you know, uh, they are doing this on TV. So, I think 
there was you know some uh, type of hesitation that they didn't wanted that second fall from kushira to be on the commercial break so i think you know there was a last moment decision from the referee or some someone like that to have this fall happen you know before the commercial break something like that if it's that then i i, I can obviously not say anything but if it was pre planned then it was a bad decision other than that the match was solid you know kushida like always is brilliant and he's you know the yeah, absolutely and every time he goes for that hoverboard lock from the top rope it looks it sometimes cringes me yeah kushida is a great wrestler cesaro uh, said uh, somebody questioned cesaro in an interview or something uh, who are the superstars you would like to face who is the best technical wrestler and all of that stuff so obviously the common names are daniel bryan and aj styles and all of that but he also named kushida which was way out of the box but if you're getting the praise from someone like cesaro it means something kushida is a great wrestler and he has a great future with the cruiserweight championship and by the way i'm not appreciating kushida's you know 2002 john cena look okay yeah he, he does look like the 2002 john cena he, now that you say it he does look like that because i didn't uh, you know think of it that way either you know go back to the uh, the denim jeans or you know go back to your classic kushida you know uh, white gear yeah with the with the denim jeans he looked really good with the white uh, you know like a cheap look of a uh, orange cassidy or a dean ambrose he looked like that i don't know uh, who uh, told him to go to this orange john cena shorts yeah <laughs> he became a face character probably <laughs> but uh, anyways man uh, uh, i think the final 5 or 10 minutes of the match was pretty solid here uh, i think uh, the kushira wanted to finish off you know escobar uh, with that hoverboard lock but you know escobar was trying to avoid it also made to the ropes but kushira you know uh, he hit a hammer lock suplex which looked beautiful got the pin here that was it and like i predicted uh, like i uh, said it last week this is it you know this was uh, escobar's farewell from the cruiserweight division i guess so he could you know go back to that uh, he could you know hang around that mid card area you know maybe challenge for the north american championship but this was it for him uh, as a cruiserweight wrestler yeah so santos escobar was a, he's a great wrestler obviously but uh, now that you talk about it in the mid card division it's getting really full as i said jay catlis and elena knight weren't even there this week and then you have dexter lumis as you said so all these superstars are filling up and you have only two titles or probably three because not everyone will fit in the 205 division the weight category so in that sense there are a lot of superstars and you can't predict who is going to be the future challenger but the two weeks that are coming in front of us i am really excited next week we have the a north american championship match we have gargano and bronson reed in a steel cage match we have tony storm and zoe stark probably ending their rivalry then after that for two weeks from now we have the nxt championship balor and cross we have the world premier debut of frankie mune so it's a good future we are moving into and i uh, hope they quickly start building up uh, take over in your house yeah absolutely they need to start but uh, for that the title matches need to happen because then you start building the contenders and the rivalry uh when is it exactly june 10th 11th something like that june 13th in your house is june 13th so that's going to be i think we're going to get a whole month or so yeah it's uh, may 12th in india 11th in us so there's an entire month and one day i think they can uh, uh, still can build up that uh, entire card you need a strong yeah, build they up can, they can build a good card now that uh, bobby fish is also back you see that happening that could be a separate match you have obviously the four uh, or five whatever titles you have the women's title the women's tag titles cruiserweight north american and nxt championship so you have five title matches you have bobby fish and kyle o'reilly so it's going to be a good card actually So anyways man that was NXT uh what you think about the overall what you think about this week show it was more entertaining than last week 
Last week also, I rated it a 7.5. This week, I would rate it an 8. I like the show daily. So, uh, uh, before we leave, man, where can these guys find you? Okay, you can find me on YouTube at Garbete BC. I have talk shows, I do vlogs, I do special day episodes. So, you can all check me out on YouTube and on Instagram at Garbete BC. You can find Slam Up Wrestling on Twitter at Slam Up W, Instagram at Slam Up Wrestling. You can catch uh, this review as audio on the audio versions uh, on Spotify and Anchor as well. So this was the NXT review and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.